thank you for that invitation. <laughs> it is time for each one of us to be the light of the world, the light that we are born in as and through the light of the world. There is nothing else but the light. As we look to our neighbors, knowing that we are each divinely guided to be here in this moment right now. Let us welcome one another with an open heart and an open mind. Are we truly here to know something new today? Yes? Yes. yes. And so, so often, you know, I hear things like, it would just be so much easier and such less work with the right person to be happy. It would just happen so much quicker if I was just with the right person. And what I love about that false belief is that there is no one else out there. There's no one like you or me made in the image and the likeness of the one power and one presence in all the universe showing up as each one of us as this unique constellation brimming with light overflowing to share our gifts with the world. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah? No, I, I see some heads shaking, no. Okay, today's a new day. Do you want to know something new? You are the light of the world, beautiful, precious one. You are the light of the world, beautiful, precious one. That's what we should be saying to one another when we meet at the stop signs. Who goes first? You, beautiful, precious one. You go before me. Right? Giving in giving in, giving in to the love overflowing that we are. We would want to share our gifts with the world. Here, take what's mine, it's yours. Right? That's what our heart knows. That's what our hearts know is possible. And so in order to live that in this world of form, we have to be that. So we've been looking out there for someone else or something to make us happy. When happiness is right here and right now and doesn't go anywhere, it's right here and right now. How many of us were taught that? Not many of us. And that's okay. Let's let everybody off the hook who came before this moment. Done. I forgive everybody in my life. I forgive myself for judging anybody as having done anything wrong that led me to this perfect moment right here and right now, doing the work of spirit as me, as you, as each and every one of us, the divine expression. So for me, when I realized that happiness is not dependent on anything or anybody, that happiness is right here when I choose it, when I'm open to it, when I see clearly, an acronym came to me about happy. I love acronyms because it makes my life so much easier. I don't need to like memorize things and try to get it like, oh my God, I've got to get that. What if I forget? You know what? Forget everything we knew before this moment. Are we willing to do that? To forget everything that we've ever been told before this moment and begin again and renew our minds. So for me, so try this on. While I'm sharing with you this acronym, just be aware of what comes up inside of you. Be aware, oh no, I wouldn't have said that word if I was her. Well, you're not me. You're, you're you, how beautiful is that? So allow yourself to know what comes to you because see, the application of theory is what matters. To create matter that matters, right? We need to apply what works for us, each one of us as the divine authority in our lives. So for me, I begin with hue, which in Sanskrit means light. I am the light of the world. 
Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but have life everlasting from John chapter 8, verse 12 is one of my favorites. You see, Hugh, think about this. Now, I've shared this before about humor because I love humor. Divine humor is the best. Hugh is light, a.k.a. God, peace, love, loving kindness, whatever you want to put in there. More God, Hugh, more, more light. When we are speaking words of wisdom, when the word of love comes in and through and as each one of us as that expression, this is the road to happiness, my friends, begins with light, hue, humility, being humble. You see, if I allow the light that I am to shine forth, what happens to me, this is my personal experience, is that all of the other things that I've been wavering on, self-doubt, hesitation, oh, good, bad, geez, they're accepted, they're not excluding, all of that stuff falls away. The light is the first step for me to remember that I am the light of the world, we are the light of the world, that is the first step for me on this road to happiness. That I am so willing to listen to the naysayers in my mind that say, oh no, you're broken, damaged, you can't do it. Not like them. Well, of course not like them. Like me. As this unique expression, can you relate to this? Can we be humble enough to say, oh, yes, I too have sinned. I too have thought error thoughts about my brothers and sisters. I too forgot who I was. I too forgot to reply in love. That's all sin is, living without, missing the mark, whatever you want to call it. I too have done that. Right? The first person who hasn't ever thought an error thought, stand up. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> right? Simon says, stand up if you have not judged yourself or another. Yeah. So we're all equal. Equal. That's it. Done. No more competition or greed. We're done. Now we move on to the next one. The A for me is allowing, allowance. And when I see that, when I hear that, when I feel that, allowing the light that I am to flow forth, when I allow that, it's all one. In that space of allowing, you see, if we're not afraid of what's out there, if we're not afraid that there is not plenty in this world for everyone, if we're not afraid that there's not enough love for everyone, we allow everything to break us open so that the light can come through, so that the light can get in and out and in and out, and it's all the same thing. When we allow, we move into every moment being aware of those little niggling doubts and fears that are wanting to wake us up. To say, oh, you know what? I accept you as you are. And in the acceptance of myself, I can see you and I accept you as you are. You know, some of you who know me know, I have done work in prisons where people are have no possibility of parole. I'm talking about lifers. And some of them are more free behind those bars than the people out here, including myself at times. We point our fingers and we judge. Oh, God, I would never do something like that. Oh, really? I beg to differ. Anybody put in any particular a certain situation can do exactly what somebody has done that is behind bars. So when I allow myself to be so humble in body, mind, and spirit as to know that 
There is no one to judge. I judge not. Because I know what it feels like to be judged. We can all relate to this, right? I know what it's like to be judged. Do you know what it's like to be judged? We're usually the biggest judges in our life, and the jury, and everything else, and the prosecutor, and the defense, and we're just all of it. Judge in a way. And then we get upset when someone judges us. Nobody ever told me something I didn't already think about myself, right? And the truth is, I don't have to believe everything I'm thinking anyways. And so, Hugh, humility, being humble enough to allow the light in and through and as me so that I can be broken open and to realize that, oh, all that's trying to come in is more love. Can I allow that? And it's in the allowing of that that, for me, I move to the P, the first P in happy. Can you guys spell happy? H-A-P-P-Y. The first P for me is, let me get out my little spray bottle, (laughs) perspective. (laughs) So that I have the perspective of a prophet. We are all prophets. We are all prophets. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, Lao Tzu. And any author you might admire right now, Sadhguru, whoever it is, your best friend, didn't walk around saying, I am the only one. I am the way, the light, and the truth. They said, I am the way, the light, and the truth. They didn't say, and you're not. It's, and so much more shall you be and do and have. Because someone who knows the truth, that love is all there is, they just want to share it. And they want to help you know that in yourself. That's what a true spiritual leader does. A prophet is somebody who's divinely inspired. That's all that is. Have you ever been divinely inspired? When you're not feeling divinely inspired, get out your spray bottle and just clear the lens of a perception so that you can see as a prophet sees. A prophet sees the light of the world. That's all there is out there. And, you know, I thought this was quite funny this morning in my meditation when I started laughing. Oh, my God, you are so funny, God. I said, and most spiritual centers and churches, religious and spiritual, call themselves nonprofit? Hello? Yeah, there isn't one prophet. There are many, and we invite you to be many. And we know that nobody is really profiting until everybody's profiting, right? We don't stop when only a select few have all the goods and services in the world where we're all there as slaves to somebody else. That is not the truth. The truth is there's plenty for everyone. So a true prophet speaks that and shares that and knows that and lives that and invites others into that same space. So the second P in happy for me is purity, pureness, pure of spirit. And a tool for that is prayer. Pure of spirit through prayer. Well, in unity, we talk about prayer as affirmative action in the world. What we are doing is we are using our thoughts spoken and unspoken, our words, what we're saying, what we're believing, what we're thinking, what we're sharing with one another, as actively changing the world, actively changing our lives. So as I allow myself to be the light that I am and clear my lens of perspective so that I can see clearly the light that you are? How can I be anything other than pureness of thought in mind, affirming positively that this world is a place more beautiful that works for everyone, excluding no one, only always including everyone, Clearing our lenses 
And something that helps me with that, I did share last Sunday, and I told Diane <laughs> it would come up again today because it is, it happens to be, I got to say it, Diane. Okay, Diane's birthday is June 22nd, and I like to play with Bible verses, billboards, like I said, anything is to be used for good. So her birthday happens to be June 22nd, and one day we were sitting together, and I said, I wonder what verse of the Bible is your birth verse. And so we looked up Matthew chapter 6, verse 22, and I'm like, oh my God, right? Like the truth right there. She came to live this. That the eye is the lamp of the body. And if the eye is filled with light, the whole body is filled with light. But you see, if the eye is filled with darkness, what happens to the body? It's filled with darkness. Does darkness come and darkness go? Yes, it does. The light, though, is always here, ever shining, never going anywhere. So if I commit to seeing clearly, being the light that I am, allowing the light to come through me, how could I go wrong? And it's in the awareness, though, of the allowing that I catch myself if I have tripped. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. If I've tripped, I can stop myself and take that holy pause and wait upon spirit. Wait. This is a good one, you guys. What am I thinking? Wait. What am I thinking? Yeah, right? I'm going to wait because I need to look at what I've been thinking. What am I thinking? And the other one for me, because silence is so golden, is why am I talking? <laughs> right? But God, but God, oh my God, oh my God, that's not exactly what I asked for. Oh good, thank you God, because I know you know better than I do. But no, sometimes we forget that God knows better than we do. And I want you to know something. I'm talking about God, the truth of each and every one of us, the God selves that we are, the human, which is simply light being. That's what human is. Light being has nothing to do with gender, guys. We are little light beings. Humans, beautiful humans, given this beautiful consciousness so we can use it for our good. Which moves me right to why. Now, this one was tricky because it all came at the same time. Yippee, Yahoo, yes! <laughs> yes, it's you, it's me. And just look at the why. The V that goes into the line, right? A as if we weren't one. The branches of the one vine, the tree, the source of life, the goodness, the God, the one power and one presence in all the universe showing up as each and every one of us, where two or more are gathered. In oneness we stand. That's each of us. That beautiful why that always meets in oneness. Every of, one of the songs that was playing today, you know, lean on me. Hey, we all falter. We all need someone to lean on. We all forget who we are sometimes. We don't have to judge ourselves for that. It's just something that happens. But when we stop looking out there for that right person to make us happy and realize that happy is right here, that I have to be that which I'm looking for, because we can all sit here right now, and this is an exercise to do. What do I think will make me happy? Naming the qualities that will make me happy. If this, if that, if she says this, if they do that, if the world looks like that, so you get it, right? You start adding to that. This is what will make me happy. This is what I think will make me happy. The cool thing to do, hey, Jerome, 
is to turn that beautiful little handheld mirror around, look in it, and say, ooh, am I being those qualities that I'm looking for out there? This is the best thing to do with kids. I used to do it with teens. What is a, a good friend? And they would have no problem writing down all of the bullet points of what a good friend is. And then I would ask the million dollar question. Are you being all those qualities you're looking for? Or those of us that have ever looked for that beloved partner, intimate, romantic partner? Well, I certainly know what I want to find in them. But then I get to turn it around. You know what I'm talking about? And ask the million dollar question. Am I being those qualities? Now, it might feel overwhelming if we don't think that we're being any of them. But what I say is just choose one because the rest will follow. Because you see, as above, so below, right? As within, so without. There is nothing out there that is against us except for us. And when we get on board with realizing that happiness is not dependent or reliant on anybody else, and yes, it is a process. It is a process that we have to give ourselves and one another the dignity of our own process to know that we're not all at the same place at the same time all the time. And that's okay. Can that be okay? Yeah. So if a friend comes to me and they're grieving, and if I just look at them and go, oh, sorry, you're suffering so much. All you have to do is, like, get happy, and you'd be great. Why would I do that to somebody? Why would I do that to somebody? Not allow them to be where they are and know that where they are is perfect. You see, because I don't think I'm better than anybody else. I don't think my way is the only way. I know that my way is working for me. But I don't need you to agree with me. I'm just offering love from a perspective of something that I have used in my own life because I can never share anything else. Otherwise, it's just theory. And anybody can go read a book. You didn't need to come here to hear anything else. You can just read about it. But I'm just sharing with you how I'm applying this to my life. And I like ease and grace and joy and glory. So I always ask spirit, my higher self, to speak to me in a way that is comprehensible and that I can easily understand. And then I apply it to my life in the moment because truth always works in every situation, there is not a time when truth doesn't work. But we each have to be willing to try it on and ask, like, what does happy mean to you? What is the H for you? Anybody? Wholeness? Beautiful. Holy wholeness, Joan. I love it. Healing, yes. And I heard another one, Melanie, was that? Health. Health and healing and wholeness. Yes, Belinda. Hope, absolutely. Grace. Heaven. Here. Humor and humility, yes. Ha ha, yes. <laughs> ha ha. Yes. Yeah. How about A? What is A for you? Aligning, absolutely. Woo. Amen. I'm in. Awareness, acceptance. acceptance, all right, appreciation, action, 
acting from the I am that I am. Yes. Ah. I see a theme here, Aleem. Ha ha, ah, I like it. I like it. Anything else for the A? Art, yes. Beth, that's what you were thinking too? Awesome. <laughs> we start thinking alike. Awesome, yes. <laughs> How about the first P? Yes. Pretty open-minded. Oh, I love that one. And play. I'm going to play with that one. Pretty open-minded. That's awesome. Present. Peace. Patience. Yes. Praise. Peace. Play. Presence. Pure. Oh my God, we could write a good story with these words. Possibility. Plenty. Potentiality. Yes. Purpose. Now we have to whole, have a whole bunch of new ones for the second P, everyone. <laughs> I know there are more. Playful. Perseverance. Yes. Purity, preservation, pleasure, yeah. plentiful, peace. Can never have too much peace. Yeah. Practical. Practically perfect in every way. Does anybody know what that quote is from? I love Mary Poppins. And anybody who's magical. <laughs> that means everyone here. Hello. Manifesting all good in consciousness right here, right now. Don't need to go anywhere else. How about passion? Yes. Passing the I am that I am on. Yes. Precious. That's a good movie, by the way. How about the why? Q, yes. Eeyore. Oh, that's an E-Y. Okay. <laughs> Any other Ys? Wise ones? Yeshua. Yes. Yellow. Sunflower yellow for Doris. <laughs> yes. One of my favorite three-letter words besides fun. Yummy. Oh, another one. Yay. What is that? Y'all. Y'all means y'all. Is that right? Y'all means all. Absolutely. Word up on that one. Yeah. And so this is one of my all-time favorite authors. I've given so many of these books away, Love Without Conditions. But you know, I remember when I was here at Unity of Birmingham, I asked that the bookstore always would have a copy of this and the 12 Steps to Forgiveness uh, by Paul Farini. And um, I, I bring this with me everywhere because this is one of his first books, and it's called Love Without Conditions, which true love is, hath no conditions. Love loves. That's what love does. And so I just wanted to read one little piece and hear about peace. So let's just take a nice centering breath within on this one. Just as we center ourselves within ourselves and open ourselves up to hearing these beautiful words. When you come to peace, world peace becomes imminent. If you have a responsibility to others, it is only this one. That you come to peace in your own heart and mind. Some people think that such advice is selfish and irresponsible. They believe that they must save the world to find happiness. That is an error in perception. Unless they find happiness first, the world is doomed. This may be hard for you to hear, but it is the truth. 
Unless you're happy now, you will never find happiness. So if you're not happy now, stop trying to find happiness in the future and bring your attention to the present moment. That is where your happiness is. And there are many tools to apply something like that, to realize that if I catch myself seeking out there, if I find myself in a place of discord, that I can look at what I'm judging in someone else or another. Because usually, usually 99.9% of the time, if we're struggling or we're unhappy, it's because we want this moment to be different than it is. And so if we can allow this moment to simply be as it is, that opens up the space within us that's already here. The space of grace is here already. We simply need to become aware that something, some judgment, some thing I'm condemning another of is here in this space. And so I then have the choice and the responsibility, the ability to respond to that within myself, to pause and take a moment and say, God, Holy Spirit, divine allness, love, beauty, I open myself up to receive divine guidance, to know that this moment is perfect as it is, and please reveal to me anything that I need to know, and then I move into this space of listening. Like now, as we use this time to move into a meditation, just to center ourselves more in this space within of hearing these words of this beautiful song. If any of us have ever been told that we are not precious, perfect, whole, and complete as we are, then let us hear more clearly the truth. So I invite you to sit back and relax. Close your outer eyes if you're comfortable or soften your gaze as you listen to these words. this space, this holy space, this space with the holy breath of spirit breathing us effortlessly as we allow ourselves to be held in the arms of spirit, letting go and relaxing into the very arms of the universe, knowing that we are held, that we are guided, that all is being revealed to us in spirit's most perfect and precious timing. As we open ourselves up to that light, that light that each of us is born as, we allow ourselves to be birthed again and again and again in this holy, sacred space within knowing that we truly are here on purpose for a divine purpose. And it's simply to be the light of the world that we are. So let us take a few moments in this silence within to just rest and wait upon the holy breath, simply listening in the silence. We rest. As we allow ourselves to move in and through the silence, may we be reminded that the moment is as it should be because it is as it is. May we go forth today knowing that we are loved and supported 
that life is truly unfolding in its perfection as each and every one of us. Knowing that we are always connected, interdependent, and completely sustained by the one power and one presence in all the universe having its way with each and every one of us. And with fullness of heart, overflowing with gratitude, let us simply say thank you. Thank you, thank you. And so it is, and so we let it be.